Hello, and welcome to Invision System Manager 8.0 release presentation. Let's take a look at the most important features in the release. One of the main elements in this release is the ability to support the new Invision Controller X device. Another important addition is that you can now add network equipment and manage network equipment in rooms. This allows System Manager to support new horizontal cabling topologies, like some of the UCG proposed ones. We have also added new API functions that allow System Manager to share more information with external systems. The firmware update feature is now enhanced to support centralized distribution of Invision Controller and Invision Controller X firmware packages. For the complete list of all things included in this release, please refer to the release notes document. We're going to start by reviewing the characteristics and features of the Invision Controller X. Here we have a front view of the new Invision Controller X device. It has a new capacitive touch display that is bigger and has better resolution than the one in the previous controller. The display includes a USB port on the side, which allows easy access to collect logs or, for example, perform USB firmware update from the front of the rack. The new controller X supports SSL communication with System Manager and also allows to disable the web interface if so desired. Here we see the Invision Controller X from the back. On the right side, we have a dedicated RJ45 port for network connection and two additional RJ45 ports for the in and out connections to other nearby controllers. On the left side, we have a reset button. This lets you delete all information in the Invision Controller X and clear configuration, network, and security settings to factory defaults. There are also three panel bus ports, which allow this new Invision Controller X to provide intelligence to up to three adjacent racks. This is what we call multi-rack mode or configuration. In this drawing, we have three adjacent racks and one Invision Controller X mounted in the middle one. We are looking at the racks from the front. The three racks are what we call managed racks. In other words, these racks can have intelligent eye patch panels and shelves. The racks on the left and right are also called dependent racks. This means that these managed racks do not have an Invision Manager of their own. Instead, they are managed from a control X that is mounted on a different rack. The rack in the middle is also a managed rack, but in this case, we call it a controller rack. This means that the intelligence comes from an Invision Manager mounted on this rack. Note there is one panel bus mounted on each managed rack. This is shown here in yellow. Also note the green lines. They represent panel bus connections between the ports in the back of the controller X and each panel bus. In this drawing, we see three racks, but this time from the back. Note that in this case, the three panel buses show on the right, and this is because we are seeing the same racks, but from behind. The panel bus connections always go to the left and right of the middle rack. The middle rack is always the rack with the Invision Controller X. When an Invision Controller X is working in multi-rack mode, it can manage up to 10 
rack units of eye patch panels or shelves on each rack. The eye patch panels don't need to be all mounted in consecutive rack units like shown here. They can be placed anywhere in the racks as long as the limit of 10 rack units for each rack is not exceeded. In this example, we have three racks in a multi-rack configuration. They are all managed by the Invision Controller X mounted in the middle rack. This is rack 2. Rack 1 has two intelligent panels. Each one is one rack unit tall. This means there are still eight rack units available to mount more eye patch panels or shelves in rack 1. Rack 3 has a similar situation. There is one copper panel at the bottom and one fiber shelf at the top. They amount to two rack units with eye patch panels, which means there are still eight rack units available in this rack. The rack in the middle is in a different situation. At the top, we have a 2U3 row eye patch UHD fiber shelf and three 1U fiber shelves. Towards the bottom, we have five 1U copper panels. This is a total of 10 rack units used for intelligent panels and shelves, and this is the maximum. This rack cannot have any additional eye patch panels added. Note that this is true even when there is extra capacity in racks 1 and 3. So it is important to understand that the limit is per rack and nearby racks cannot borrow additional capacity that may be available on other racks in the multi-rack group. Now, let's see how all this is represented in System Manager software. A new Envision Controller X object is now available in the list of Envision Managers that you can add to racks. The properties of this object include a setting called Multi-Rack Mode, which can be set to Yes or No. This setting can be manually configured or can also be set automatically by System Manager if during a synchronization it finds that the controller is connected to more than one panel bus. There is also a new field that shows the racks this controller X manages. In this case, we see racks 1, 2 and 3 listed. The properties of racks, cabinets, and auxiliary racks include a managed field, which can be yes or no, like shown here. Managed racks are indicated with a special icon that has a blue glow. This icon is used for both controller racks and dependent racks. Here we see the properties of a dependent rack. This is again the word we use for a rack that does not have an Envision Manager on it, but that has a panel bus connected to a nearby controller X. This rack will show as Managed Yes in System Manager, and the Managed By field will be populated with the name of the rack and controller X this dependent rack is connected to. Note also the iPad rack units available field. In this case, it shows nine. It means that this rack has extra capacity for up to nine more rack units with iPad panels or shelves. To see all this in action in System Manager, let's use a very simple example. Here we have a room with two racks. They are both managed racks, which we can tell by the icon. Rack 1 
does not have a controller. The managed field indicates yes, and the managed by shows that rack 2 is where the controller is. Rack 2 has an envision controller X, and also we can quickly tell that it has nine rack units of available capacity for more iPatch panels or shelves. The next new feature we want to mention is the ability to add network equipment and managed network equipment objects directly in rooms. Until now, these objects could only be placed in racks or cabinets. Here we see two typical horizontal topologies that System Manager has supported since the beginning. In both cases, the switch appears in a rack far from the devices connected to it. Here we see two new topologies supported. At the top we see a switch placed in a room, connected to a faceplate. Multiple devices connect to the switch ports. The faceplate connection is an uplink connection to a panel and another switch in the rack. A similar situation is shown at the bottom, but includes a zone wiring horizontal approach. The three configurations shown here are also supported now. In the top, we have a small in-room switch connected with an uplink port directly to panel and switch in a rack. Note that this circuit has no faceplate. The in-room switch provides services to the devices near it. For example, it could be a small switch mounted in the ceiling and connected to IP surveillance cameras in the area or access points. The topology in the middle is the same as the top one, but including a consolidation point for easier distribution from a central location. The topology in the bottom shows another new supported configuration. This is a consolidation point connected through cabling to a panel and switch in the rack, and to the right it shows patch connections directly to devices in rooms. Another enhancement introduced in this release is the ability to see in a single trace window not only the circuit trace for the device or port chosen, but also the circuit trace for the uplink port in the network equipment in room. For example, here we see the trace for port 1 in the switch. This is an in-room switch and port 1 is connected to device 1. In the same trace window, we see that the switch has an uplink port, which is port 12. By switching tabs, we can quickly see the circuit trace for this uplink port. This means that in one window, we have the full connectivity picture for a device connected through this in-room switch. Next, let's briefly review some of the new API functions included in this release. We added an API to obtain managed network equipment information given its ID or the IP address of the switch. Another API lets you get work order information by work order state, put a work order on hold, or delete work orders in the system by their date. The switch ports function lets you collect switch port properties given the port ID or the outlet ID where the port is connected to. The circuits API function lets you get circuit trace information given a port ID. Last, the devices in room function lets you assign a device in room to a person or change the device type for a device in room. The last feature we want to mention is the firmware update feature. 
This feature is not new. It existed before, but only supported Panel Manager and Rack Manager Plus firmware updates. Now, the feature is enhanced, so you can use it to update any type of controllers. This is how the feature looks like. At the top left, you can select a location, and all the network managers in the location are shown in the table below. At the top right, you see the different firmware packages that System Manager 8.0 includes. All you have to do is select one or more zones to update by placing a check mark. Then click Update. System Manager takes care of the rest. It will start with the zone at the top of the table, determine what type of controllers that are in the and what firmware versions they are running. It will then decide what packages to push and what method of transfer to use. Once finished, it will continue with the next zone down. You don't have to wait. You can just close this window and come back later to see the results for each zone in the comments column on the right. This completes the list of the most important features included in System Manager 8.0. Thank you very much for your time and we hope to see you soon in the next video.